Welcome to Lessons from Life, the podcast that gleams profound life lessons from everyday life stories. Hosted by Dustin Fenton and Brandon Hill. Dustin, good to see you again this week. Yeah, good to see you, Brandon. Heard you had a good trip away. You said you were traveling last week, so it's good right. to have you back. Yeah, I went to San Diego, and actually, I've got a story that I want to share about that. To our listeners, Dustin and I both live in the Midwest, and so I had opportunity to go to a conference last week in San Diego, which is actually where I used to live for about four years, about 12 years ago. And so the conference was in one hotel. To save some money, I booked a hotel that was about half a mile away. And I thought, well, it'll be great. I can walk to the conference every day and get some of the warmth and the sun. And I actually found a back road that walked along the harbor between the hotels. It was kind of fun because at some place I had to like walk literally through the lobbies of some of the hotels to keep on this path. But it was really cool. And the second morning I was walking this path and you you could hear the seagulls and then there were bells ringing on the boats and stuff. And I just was like oh man, it sucks that I don't live here all the time. Mm. And I just started feeling really sorry for myself. And I took about 10 more steps and I was like, wait a second, I'm here in this beautiful place. It's 65 degrees. Back home, (laughs) there's five inches of snow and it's minus one degrees. I really need to be excited and uh, live in the joy of this moment and be appreciative that I was there. And it really was a weird experience, kind of having this beautiful thing depress me because I couldn't get it all the time Mm. uh, and and not taking the time to enjoy it when when I had it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Was there something that woke you up from that and made you realize that? Or was it just the juxtaposition of the five inches of snow versus the <laughs> 65 degree weather? Yeah, you know, I, I I just think those few extra steps did it. I mean, okay. again, earlier in the day, people had said to me, hey, it's minus one and it's snowing here. Enjoy being out there. So probably picking up that memory. Having people encourage you to live, live in the moment uh, right. as opposed to live in some other future space. huh? Right. What's really uh, an interesting part to the story is I came back a couple days ago and I was expecting to have to practically shovel my drive before I could park in my own garage. And I get home and my drive was completely clear. And I thought, oh, well, maybe the sun melted it, you know, off the cement. And the next morning when I got up, I looked out the window and it was very obvious that someone had brought a snowblower to my house and blowed the snow off of my driveway. And I still don't know who did it to this point. Oh, my. It was kind of cool to think about the fact that, you know, I was in the warmth of the sun in California, but coming back into the Midwest where it was cold, I still experienced warmth. It was the warmth of someone's heart who Mm -hmm. said, hey, Brandon's not here and I'm going to do this for him. Now, I don't know why they did it. Maybe they just did it out of the goodness of their heart or maybe they realized he's not there and it will be obvious he's not there if the snow isn't blown off the drive and they did it to help keep my house safe while I was gone, but... Right. That was a cool part to the end of the story. No, that's that is cool. Yeah, just the provisions that that you have there with you, a friendly neighbor of some sort to be able to make that happen, and and the connection between the two warmths of life and warm in the atmosphere and <laughs> and warm in the heart and the, heart. And the mind. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. I was just gonna say, you know, I think the big two lessons for me: one was live in the moment and be thankful for the good things you have in the moment. But then also the second lesson is the same, but different in that it's being thankful for the people in your life who are watching out for you and and taking care of you. When do you think, just as humans, uh, maybe not necessarily you, but when when in humanity do we most often want to live out of the moment? I'll say this, I'm on Facebook, and it seems Mm -hmm. like it's bipolar for me. It's like either everyone is sick in the hospital or everyone's on vacation. It feels like there's always someone I know at Disney World. And I love Disney World. I think sometimes we look at the experiences of other people and wish that we had those experiences and it keeps us from being fully engaged in our own experiences in life and frankly, learning the lessons that we need to learn. For as much as I'd love to be at Disney World every day all year long, my guess is it would get really boring after about three or four weeks because there wouldn't be new things to experience and and new lessons to learn. As I was thinking about this episode and and this experience in the sun at at the beach, I thought of experience I had about a year ago, actually at the same conference, but last year it was held in Florida. It's really nice 
for people in the Midwest when they hold conferences in California or Florida uh, in, in the middle of the winter. I think it was Valentine's Day and I went out walking on the beach and I realized that it was early in the morning and there are a lot of shells everywhere. And I started picking up all these shells and they had these little conch shells, maybe two or three inches long. And I found like 10 of them and they were beautifully formed. And I was like, these are really cool. And I picked up a bunch of other shells, some of which were broken and not fully formed. Well, when I started cleaning them all off, I realized that all the perfect shells had little animals living in them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I could take these, but I'd have to kill the animal. Mm -hmm. And I would be killing a beautiful thing just so that I could enjoy its beauty later. Then I looked at the broken shells I had, and I realized that a lot of them were still beautiful, even though uh, they were broken. And so I ended up throwing the perfectly formed shells of animals in back into the ocean because the seagulls were picking them up. I, I didn't realize that's why the seagulls were going after them. So I threw them back to kind of save them and then kept all the broken shells. And I think for me, there are kind of two lessons out of this as well. I think when we try to own beautiful, natural things, or maybe even other people, we often are damaging them in the process when we want to own something or someone else. Uh, we damage it. And then I think the second thing out of that is that even broken things can be beautiful and treasured. And to some extent, I think we're all broken in some way. We've all been wounded in some way, but that doesn't diminish uh, you know, our beauty or our worth. In fact, it might actually enhance it. Again, you know, the theme of our podcast is taking the lessons from life and, and growing from them. And maybe without these damages and these hurts and these experiences, we may not have grown. Yeah, it's interesting you said ownership and when you try to own those shells, because really when you own them, no one else can own them, including those animals, uh, as you found out. And that's really what our, as humans, you know, uh, in, in humanity, we're really more called to stewardship. Uh, where it's where it's mutual governance of things as opposed to singular ownership. So I, I just thought that was interesting that you decided to steward those animals back into the ocean as opposed mm -hmm. to letting the seagulls own them mm -hmm. um, and let them be part of the ecosystem there. And, and sure, they may get eaten by animals there, but at least they were in there more kind of <laughs> traditional habitat as it were. So mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, I, I agree with you about the broken and that brokenness is often what creates beauty. I'm trying to think of another example of that from nature. So for instance, another example of that is I was out on a walk with my son in the woods the other day and, and it's a trail, a path I'd been down many times before and something just kind of caught my eye funny and, and I've, I've literally been on this path hundreds of times not just you know dozens of times but hundreds of times and something caught my eye funny that i noticed a stick what i thought was maybe you know jammed between a fork of a tree and i called my son over there and was a little bit off the path and i called my son over there and the brokenness of a limb that had fallen actually created new beauty as well because what had happened is that fork many years ago the stick had fallen and the tree had actually grown up around the stick and created a new new something. So out of the brokenness of the stick that had fallen a long time ago, maybe 20 years ago, who knows, and had now created a new limb to this tree, obviously rotten if you put any pressure on it, but I'll send you the picture and maybe we can put it on our website. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other, you know, broken things that, that are beautiful. I've seen a lot of artistic pieces made out of broken china mm -hmm. where they create mosaics out of broken things. So I'm thinking, too about uh, you know when I grew up in South Africa there's a plant there called the protea and its seeds I believe only germinate after a fire and so yes. the seeds fall to the ground and uh, when a fire goes through and destroys the parent plant that's what then germinates the seeds and so they wouldn't germinate if it weren't for some kind of uh, catastrophe and if you're trying to grow the seeds yourself my understanding is you have to burn some wood and put it in the dirt around the seed and then water it or it won't germinate. No, that's exactly right. There's a tree in the western part of the United States called the jack pine tree, and it does the exact same thing. The pine cone won't open up and won't germinate until it's reached a forest fire. 
Mm. And so they're the first trees that come back after a forest fire, a bad forest fire out west. Yeah. These jack pines. Yeah. That's cool. Well, it looks like we're running out of time here. What are the lessons we learned today? Be thankful for where you're at. Brokenness can be beautiful and is beautiful. Yeah, I think even combining those two is is living in the moment, even if the moment seems broken, there's opportunity to have some redemption in that. So, right. That's exactly. great. Exactly. Well, thanks, Dustin. Good to talk with you and, and share stories together. In the next few weeks, we should be having some guests joining us and hearing their stories, and that should, uh, that should be fun. Have a great Sounds week. Good. Thanks, Brandon. You too. Thanks for listening to Lessons from Life. We hope that you have learned a lesson today that will help you to be more fulfilled in life's journey. If you were inspired by today's episode, please subscribe and review. You can find Lessons from Life at LessonsFromLifeForYou.com. That is with the number four and the letter U. You can also find links to all of our social media on our website. We would love to hear the valuable lessons that you have learned from your life experiences.